So I can't believe I only joined Twitter late 2020, maybe October, November, um, because I've connected with so many fantastic people and one of these people is Portia. I'm so happy to share her wonderful interview with you, so I hope you find it useful. I think there's probably a really big scale of things that I wish I could do. On a really big scale, I wish I could create a really nice equitable society where no one feels scared to exist, no one's persecuted for being a minority or slightly different from the norm, and we all live in a great place. But on a poor, personal, realistic level, I'd really like to learn to be able to ride a bike, which sounds super weird to say as a 23-year-old living in London, but I can't ride a bike. It never clicked as a kid, and I'd really like to be able to ride one now. So maybe this year will be the year that I learn how to ride a bike. So one trend I want to bring back is exciting sleeves, mesh sleeves, flared sleeves, big sleeves, just exciting sleeves. I think sleeves are really incredible and I don't think anyone said that or they don't say it much, but yeah, sleeves, exciting sleeves. Let's bring them back this year. So my publishing career began back in 2018 when I did some work experience at Bloomsbury Publishing in the adult marketing and publicity department. And that was the first time where I'd done anything and I was like, wow, I wanna do this as a career. It was the first time that something had really, you know, struck me. I'd always loved books and I didn't wanna write, I didn't wanna teach. So I felt like my options as an English student were limited until I did that work experience. And I was like, wow, this is for me. And then I finished uni cause that was in between my second and third year. And I ended up moving out of London for a little while and I didn't work in publishing as obviously <laughs> publishing is quite London centric. I worked in a completely different field, but I made sure everything that I was learning would be applicable to a career in publishing. So I did a lot of social media management and within that I did copywriting as well. So I knew that would help me in the future. When I did move back to London, I wasn't immediately successful as well many people in getting a job in publishing. So I did an internship at a PR and comms agency which again, gave me so many useful skills and I'm pretty sure that's what got me this role, not necessarily that Bloomsbury work experience. I think my advice to anyone would be, if you're not working in publishing but want to, just grab all the skills you can. So, you know, if you maintain spreadsheets and maintain your emails, great, you'd probably be an amazing assistant in any department because you can handle that. It's just all about those transferable skills. So I'm a marketing assistant at Hay House, a wellness, mind, body, spirit type publisher, and it's a super new role created, and I'm the first person to have that role in the UK office. So a lot of my responsibilities, my on a day-to-day -day basis, are based around admin, you know, email maintenance, my own, and a shared inbox. A lot of spreadsheets, stuff like campaign calendars, tracking what sort of A-plus content has been uploaded by ourselves and the US team as well, as we keep a track of that. And of course, meetings play a huge part in what I do, which is fine, I, I actually quite enjoy it. So I attend them, I attend author meetings, which are probably my favorite, as it is so great to hear authors speak with such passion about their texts and their ideas for marketing, which is really cool for me to listen in. Um, and then I write notes for those meetings as well and circulate between their team and the whole of our team. And then I also schedule meetings as well, you know, lots of scheduling assistant, working around people's schedules, all very exciting stuff. And I think I'm super, super lucky in the fact that I actually attend editorial meetings and design meetings once a week too, as it's quite a small team in the UK office. So I get quite a varied picture of what's going on in Hay House UK as a whole on a weekly day-to-day -day basis, which is great. So my workspace is in the living room, as I'm sure many people will have answered this question. And Hay House were actually super kind and they sent me a proper desk chair, which helps with my granny back, which I definitely has as a 23 year old woman. I blame all the time gone to festivals, but you know, I've got to live with it now. So yeah, I work in the living room and I've never actually been to the Hay House office, nor have I met any of my colleagues in person, which is super strange. You know, I interviewed online, I started online and I'm one of four people to start since the March lockdown last year. Um, so I really hope this year is the year that I can meet my colleagues in person and, you know, have some brainstorming in person too. 
For me, working at home at Hay House is all I've ever known. As I said, I've never been into the office. So for me, it's gone pretty well. I deal with a bit of an unstable internet connection, but you know, when it dies, I can hotspot and it's not the worst thing in the world. And I'm lucky enough to have such a great team and they've made me feel so welcome, even though I've been at home, even though it's been via Zoom, even though it's been via Slack. You know, they've been super welcoming and I think it's something we're all gonna have to get used to for still a while longer. So yeah, it's been good. I mean, I'd love to meet them this year, but it has been a good experience working at home. So yeah, my workspace is at home, so at least my commute's not very far. <laughs> so the favorite part of my job, I kind of touched on this earlier, but it has to be like anything to do with author care, at least at the moment anyway. I love having the pre-launch meetings with the authors and just hearing them talk with such passion about what drove them to write the book, what ideas I've got for the campaign, what drives them. And I think it fills me with excitement. So when I hear, you know, ex author saying, yeah, I'm so excited about this. I wrote this because of why, and I want to do this with the campaign. And you just know it's going to work because everything they're saying is so embodied with this like passion and drive. And it makes, you know, I'm full of respect for these people. As much as I love working in publishing, I don't think I could ever publish, you know, write anything to be published myself. So yeah, I think seeing that passion and creativity transform into a campaign is probably one of my favorite things, if not the favorite thing about publishing. So again, I kind of touched on this earlier, but I have quite a varied amount of meetings depending on the week. So I always have a marketing meeting and then I attend editorial acquisitions and I don't really say much in those, but it's really great for me to listen in and cover art. So that helps me track the process of how cover art design is going. And it can be super useful for me um, just to see what the design team are thinking in terms of cover art as it can help shape the campaign. I always have a weekly catch up with my line manager as well and the whole marketing team, the three of us, which is really great. It helps build that personal relationship and it's such a good time to brainstorm. Even if it's just half an hour on every Tuesday afternoon, I think it's been super useful not just for me to bond with her, but to also have a go at actually, you know, firing ideas off at each other. And it, even though it is via a Zoom call and internet often drops, I think it's probably one of my favorite parts of the week. You know, I think it's probably time management and you always see that as a top skill on publishing applications and most applications. And while I'd like to think I'm pretty good at time management, sometimes there is just so much going on on your plate. You really need to have so many like, things on the go, so many things juggling, so many things on the burner, can't think of any more analogies, but you know, whether it be newsletter writing or creating stuff on Canva or scheduling posts for social media, I think the most challenging part is making sure that every bit of your job has the right amount of time, not necessarily equal amounts, but the right amount of time. And I think, you know, having stuff like personal diaries, I use Asana to schedule stuff for myself, really helps me stay organized and keeps me on top of the challenges in my role. So with a marketer, I think there's probably quite a few different strands you can kind of go off in, in publishing. So the standard path would probably be, you know, I probably move forward to a marketing executive position, or maybe I do digital marketing executive. I think the other route would then be communications executive in general. So maybe more bringing in more of that PR side as well. If you maybe want to bring in a little bit of that too, and maybe you've got a bit of experience there. And a new thing that I've kind of discovered since working in publishing is events management. I think events management is probably a career path that is kind of likely for me. I've started working on events at the moment, which sounds so weird to say, given, you know, everything going on. But online events are so key to Hay House. And I've been writing some really cool copy, talking to some really cool authors about doing online events. So I think the, probably the ones that me personally would go after is either marketing executive or events partnership executive or something like that. Though there is absolutely nothing saying that you can't sidestep to a different department. You know, sidestep, maybe I decide I wanted to do editorial, for example. There's absolutely no reason why I couldn't, you know, move forward and be an editorial assistant. And uh, not to big Hay House up, but they are super great for movability, I think. One lady who started as a publishing assistant and receptionist now works for the US office as the global head of audio line sales, which is so cool. So yeah, I think there's a lot of flexibility. It just depends where your passions lie. So since I've started working at publishing, I've learned a ton of things. I think one of the standout things I've learned 
is that when you see a book in a supermarket, the publisher has paid for it to be there. It's not just the display person being like, hmm, yeah, I'm gonna put this book at the top. That absolutely blew my mind. But other than that, networking is so key. Like you'll find everyone has a connection at different publishing houses. And even me, through the, pub the absolutely amazing publishing hopefuls group on Facebook, I know so many people who are now working at different publishing houses. So yeah, I think networking is probably the most key thing I've learned about publishing. And I wonder what the face of publishing is going to be like in 10, 15 years when all these people I know from publishing hopefuls, uh, you know, we're all advancing through the ladders in publishing. I'm super excited to see what sort of future that's going to bring for the industry. There's so much still that I don't know about publishing. <laughs> There's so much out there I can't even condense it into, you know, a minute long answer. I'd love to be able to know what makes a amazing marketer tick. I watch so many book marketing society videos. I would love to know how they get these fantastic ideas, like projecting stuff on the side of the Tower of London for Hilary Mantel's The Mirror and the Light. How do you get that inspiration? And I'm hoping that I'm on the beginning of that journey to get to a point where, I don't know, I'm creating some big thing on the Tower of London or the London Eye or anything like that. So yeah, I think I just want to learn how to be an industry pro. <laughs> My best advice is just speak to people. I spent a lot of the summer emailing the heads of small publishing houses being like, is there anything I can do for you? And even if they said no, there was always the offer of, you can connect with me on LinkedIn, etc. So I did help to build my network. So that leads into my next point is networking is key. You know, get yourself on Twitter, speak to people, reply to people, and you just build this network of publishing people who can help you out when it comes to your time of getting into the industry. As for key skills, there are a ton of free courses on LinkedIn Premium if you get the 30 day free trial, which I definitely did. And there's the metadata and publishing one. And there's also just some general more marketing related ones, which are super good, like just sort of like marketing analytics stuff, which come into play a lot in uh, publishing campaigns too. And if, you know, in a practical sense, it's great to say, apply for everything, any job in publishing, just so you can get in. But I think my main point of advice is focus in on the department that you want to do or departments if it's one or two. But I really noticed a change in my applications from at the start of the summer, late spring, when I was applying for a plethora of publishing roles. So editorial, admin, production, stuff that maybe I didn't truly want to do. And when I streamlined it and I was like, no, I'm only going to apply to marketing positions because that's what I want to do. That's where my passion lies. The quality of my applications visibly just went higher and I you know I got this job and I got another interview offer as well from that so just hone in your passion and it will show that's such a loaded question what is one book everyone should read I'm just gonna go with my first thought because it's probably the one that I actually believe deep down so that would be Feminism Interrupted by Lola Ulafemi by Pluto Press it is an absolutely incredible read it's quite a short read as well it you know small book but I would 110% recommend that to anyone interested in intersexual feminism, you know, tracing the intersection between race, gender, class in Britain as well. In Britain, and it was only written last year, so it's really poignant, it's really contemporary. So yeah, I would recommend everyone read that. And it's the book that probably got me back into critical theory after having that break after uni. Thank you to Portia for sharing her story on not being able to ride a bike, um, but more importantly about her role of being a marketing assistant at Hay House. I hope you found it useful.